It's the Moto X versus the Moto G. Two smartphones from Motorola, their latest and greatest and appealing to very different price points and appealing to people that like different specifications. They look similar though, and they've got some similar features between themselves. I'm Aaron Baker from PhoneDog.com. It's a versus battle. Let's take a look at the X versus the G. Is it more important to have the specs or is the price point of this device just too good to pass up? Let's go find out. It's a versus battle between the Moto X and the Moto G. Motorola's two newest smartphones and two that are designed pretty similarly, but with some different specs both under the hood and in terms of a price tag. This isn't so much a dogfight, that's why I'm not calling it a dogfight. It's more of a versus battle just to inform you of the differences, some of the pros, some of the cons of both, in order to help you make a more informed buying decision if you're considering these two devices as one of your next Android smartphones. It's the Moto X over here, it's the Moto G over here. And like I said, design-wise you can see that these are fairly similar. I mean, obviously speaker placement is a little bit different. Obviously the specs underneath the hood are different as well, but from a design perspective, very similar in terms of the placement of the buttons and more. Let's start out with the Moto X over on the left side. This thing is packing really nice specifications all around. It was recently reduced to $349 for a special Cyber Monday deal. It usually retails for about $499 available through the carriers as well and packing a 1.7 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon S4 Pro C CPU with Motorola's X8 architecture. It's got a 4.7 inch 720p HD display on this device. You've got a 10 megapixel camera on the back, two gigabytes of RAM on this unit. It is upgradable and upgrading now, I should say, to Android 4.4. KCAP, my unit has Android 4.4. It's got that 10 megapixel camera, like I said. Battery wise, you're looking at a pretty decent sized battery in this unit as well. 2,200 milliamp hours. It's non removable and the design, of course, customizable through Moto Maker, which is now available to all four carriers in the US. So as you can see mine here, for example, customized blue back cover, customized orange accents, including the ring around the camera and the buttons themselves, and black on the front. Great customization options via Moto Maker. You can customize that back cover, choose from a wealth of different colors. The front you can choose between black and white, and then of course the accent colors you can choose between a number of colors as well to really make this device your own. So kind of reminiscent of the 90s and early 2000s with Nokia devices and more bringing back that customization element to allow you to make your own device through Moto Maker. And it ships from Texas as well, so big kudos to that. It ships about 30 miles from my office. And then here's the Moto G. This thing, price point wise, substantially cheaper retails unlocked without a contract for $179 for the 8 gigabyte version, $199 for the 16 gigabyte version. And you can see design wise very similar. Now I should point out out of the box, it comes with a black cover. Black is the only color you get out of the box, but you can, uh, I should say, buy additional back covers here for $19.99. Motorola was kind enough to send over the blue one. So you can see there's still some level of personalization. It's not nearly to the extent that you would get on the X, but you do have that level of personalization where you can customize the back plate. Specs over here include a one point two gigahertz quad core Snapdragon 400 CPU, a 4.5 inch display at 720p, but a little bit smaller. And you can see that when they're held side by side and also on screen buttons here, which do take away a little bit of the screen real estate. So 4.7 versus 4.5, both again, 720p. Five megapixel camera on the back here, 720p HD video capabilities on this. Front facing cameras on both actually, one gigabyte of RAM over here, it's at a two, and then a 2070 milliamp hour non-removable battery. Also, you're missing out on LTE connectivity on the G. It has 4G LTE over on the X. Over here, HSPA Plus is what you're going to get on the unlocked GSM variant. It's running Android 4.3 with a promise from Motorola that it'll be updated to Android 4.4 KitKat as quickly as possible. So let's talk about the pros, let's talk about the cons, and let's talk about the price points of all of these devices. Now, like I said over here, Android 4.4 running, Android 4.3 running over here, and this implementation of Android 4.4 very similar to what you would obviously see from Android 4.3. You can see that these design-wise look very similar in terms of the user interface, and then of course the real difference here going into settings, you can see the settings button has changed, and some of the colors have changed as well. For example, you can see here that up top, 4G LTE battery, your signal strength indicator, all white, that Kit Kat white looking color as opposed to Jelly Bean here with the blue color scheme. And you can see some minor differences to the overall look and feel settings, icons have changed and more. So saw that battery percentage as well which is a nice touch in both operating systems. Now you've got that, you've got 4G LTE connectivity over on the X, you got more RAM, two gigabytes, and then you've got a 10 megapixel camera. Those are really the highlights of the X and obviously the personalization bit. But what you do get over here as well, some of the things under the hood, a couple of things to point out. In Motorola Assist, for example, on the Moto X, you do get the additional 
driving mode as well. So you've got driving, so when I turn that on and it detects I'm driving, I have a wealth of options. I can do talk to me, resume music play. So for example, I can say, hey, read text message, tell me who's calling, quick reply. Over here you get meeting and sleeping, but you do not get the driving capability. So just pointing out a couple of the different things that you get over on the X. And also, okay, Google Now, you get the OK Google Now functionality here as well on this unit. You do have voice capabilities over on the G, but again, keep in mind the price point here. You're looking at, without sales, without discounts, $499 versus $179 starting price point. Both are great devices, and hey, for $180, this is by far the best in terms of kind of mid-range device I've worked with from a major OEM. They definitely are knocking the ball, not gonna home run, in my opinion out of the field with this device because it brings really decent specifications. Heck, a 720p HD display to a price point that's under 200 bucks. And to hear, you know, one of the major OEMs doing that, that's really a nice bit here. And it goes really well with prepaid plans as well. I can see a use case for prepaid plans. I can see a use case for, for example, the people with second smartphones. I've said this in a bunch of the different videos, but it's really important to point out it's all about price point over here and the specs you get with that price point. Over here, personalization is obviously key. This is gonna be for the person that wants a relatively vanilla experience in terms of Android. It's got Android 4.4, so the latest version of Android. It's packing some pretty nice internals as well. 10 megapixel camera. You've got, of course, that X8 architecture here. So even though it is a dual core processor, very zippy all around with little to no lag. Very pleased with the performance on this unit. And then, of course, two gigabytes of RAM. You've got a really nice personalization piece here as well. So in terms of the versus battle, that's the difference or the prime differences between these devices. There are obviously a wealth of different little software things. For example, KitKat, you can see returns to this kind of organized menu structure, whereas over here it's more of the imaging structure where it's got the individual images laid out in kind of a grid format. So a little bit different there, a couple of little minor things like that. But overall, experience-wise, very similar all around. I'm gonna pull these away, forgive me, while I check the dialers here. And you can see the dialers are very similar here versus the Nexus 5, and of course here with the older version of Android. So bringing some of that stuff to Android 4.4, to the Moto X, and then of course Android 4.3 rocking over here on the Moto G. Both great devices, both have a lot to like. Check out the reviews of the individual ones. But that really concludes our versus battle. Keep it locked on phonedog.com. I'm on Twitter at phonedog underscore Aaron. I'm on Facebook at facebook.com slash hi Aaron Baker. Let me know what's more important to you. Is it the price point of the Moto G and the specs that come with it? Are you somebody that wants something a little bit more? Maybe the 4G LTE connectivity on the X or the 10 megapixel camera, or maybe you like the customization, the ability to have, let's say, a red back and yellow accent colors on the volume rocker and power buttons. Let me know on Twitter, phonedog underscore Aaron, Facebook, facebook.com slash hi Aaron Baker. Thanks for watching. More to come on both of these devices on phonedog.com. Have a great weekend and I'll see you next time.